Hey guys, welcome to another Six Sages Gaming video. I'm Matt, and today we're going to be talking about the Light Seekers trading card game. And I know this is a completely out of left field video. It's really just because Toys R Us is going out of business and they have packs for $2. So I thought I'll pick up some stuff, get some cards, buy some boosters, crack it open. I love opening packs, so why not? So I'm going to first talk about kind of the overall theme of the game, talk about some of the mechanics from a very high level. I'm going to include a how to play in the comments. So if you guys want to learn more, I'll make sure I have some links for that down below. But let's talk about this. Let's get into the cards so you guys can be a little bit familiar with it. And then I'll kind of get into the good, the bad, and kind of what's next. So what we have here is our two heroes. These are basically think Hearthstone style. Everyone has a hero. It determines how much, how much health you have at the start. They have those three different symbols which determine which cards you can play. And it has some other abilities or auto effects that are going to go into it. Again, if you've played Hearthstone or any other leader-based kind of trading card game or digital card game in this case as well, you're going to be familiar with this kind of mechanic. So that's nothing too new up the front. The game itself is broken into a couple different card types. We have attacks and defends, and you'll notice that these don't have a, you know, a resource cost or anything like that to them. Essentially, you get two what I'm going to call simple actions per turn, which is playing an attack card, an ability, or a defend card, or you get one super action, which is going to be your combo attack and combo buffs and combo defense, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So as we saw in that previous heroes determine what type of cards you can play. So with Sun Strider, they have to have that Sun symbol on the hero card so you can play it. Yes, there's items and other things like that that would let you unlock it, so to speak. But that's that's how it is at a very high level. Again, as you'd imagine, the whole point of the game is getting your opponent to zero health. We also then have buffs. These are very much like enchantments from magic or things that just sit out in the field and give you that auto effect for as long as it remains in play. Or they have this really unique, and I'm still not sure how I feel about it yet, but I think it's a nice start for it. Now, keeping in mind there's only one set, the second set comes out next week. But you'll notice on Tinkerbot it has that, that arrow that puts it around the corner or also on the swooping rock wing. Basically, the way this works is because they have that hard edge or that hard uh, square-like symbol, you have to meet the condition to turn it. But basically, the other way buffs work is a sentinel there. That one will just stay in play. However, there's other ones that have a circle in each corner, and at the start of your turn, you rotate it. So this would be something like Suspended Magic, where you remove a counter from it at the, the start of your turn, but you still have the buff in play. You're still getting that effect, so it's like the uh, suspend in the opposite direction, if you will. Once the card returns to its original position, you just discard it. And there's some very strong cards for uh, what the buffs do and for how long that they're in play. There are ways to, you know, disenchant them, so to speak, where you remove the buff from play. Uh, but it's interesting kind of as I was reading through the cards and determining what they do. Beyond all that, we have our combo attacks, combo buffs, and combo defense. Now, this is the most unique thing about this game, I will say. You'll notice that those element symbols are now uh, multiple. So we have a two explosion and two tech for our first card, the quantum loop or quantum leap. Let's be honest, that's what they want to call it. And it's a card that this is your super action. So once per turn, you can play any type of combo. So any of these three type card types here, and it automatically ends your turn. You'll still get to draw a card, which you'll, if you watch the learn to play, you'll see how drawing cards and whatnot comes in, into effect. I don't want to get into too much of that in this video, but this is basically your, your super moves. Again, I want to stress. So the way it works is you have to discard cards from your hand or pay the cards from your hand, I should say, equal to the number of those symbols. So you remember on those attack and defend cards, they had that one element and those get shuffled back into your deck as you play these combo attacks, combo buffs and combo defends. And what's interesting is normally a uniqueness of a card is limited to three copies in a deck. These can only be one of, and you can only have five combos in your deck. So across combo attack, combo buff, combo defend you could have you know three attacks one buff one defend you could have all five defends if you really wanted to but they must be unique so only one of and you can only have five so as we were playing through this it really did remind me to i'm going to get a little bit of a little bit of flack for making this comparison but it really felt like Yu-Gi-Oh to me in terms of like from the dual link style where your hand is the most important thing your hand is your resource you want to draw cards you want to save up for those combo attacks and it really feels like they might seem very strong initially but the, the, it's a risk and reward payoff because there's other cards or effects that make you put cards from your hand back into your deck. And obviously that's going to be a loss of tempo for you, but your hand is the most important thing in this game. And of course, then buffs on the field that can do a few more things. So it, it kind of feels like this Ashes and Yu-Gi-Oh and Hearthstone kind of mix all together. Kind of my initial impressions were that it's, it's a very simple to learn game. There's no argument possibly that can be made from that. You'll learn the rules in five minutes, you'll play out from there. But what I really enjoyed as I kept reading through the cards, there's a certain level of complexity that's in them, but it is a very easy to get into game. Now, going on from that, I do want to talk about kind of the good, the bad, and, and what's next for it. 
The good is that it's very cheap. You're, you're the most expensive cards, and these are foil, mind you, so that gold text means that it's a rare card and there's no mythics yet if you will from magic but they're coming in the next set so they'll be the i think they're calling it mythical instead of myth mythic so you'll have mythical rare uncommon which is blue and then common which is that gray text box so here we see some of the, the rare foils they're only 10 bucks and a deck is one hero five combo cards and 30 other cards so your entire deck uh, and, and again, I'm speculating because the price went out, but you can probably build a very good deck for 50 bucks worth of singles. So what we're going to talk about here in a little bit now getting into kind of the cost of it is how can we get into organized play? And this is perfect timing for light seekers. And I don't know everything that's been going on behind the scenes, but it is a great time to get into organized play because they're launching these kits for the store. So I think they did something like 40 participation foil promos and all this other stuff. You get a sweet play mat. And they're really trying to bring that focus back to local play and giving players a reason to get into the store, get playing. And that's really what you want to focus on. So it's cheap. We have organized play, at least at the local level. And then this. So if you're a cash hunter or you're playing games, like when Pokemon got cash prizing introduced, I know a lot of people that jumped right on the Pokemon train. And I got to say, Light Seekers is still kind of new and growing. And if you're strictly looking for, you know, EV in a game and you don't really care about anything else, Light Seekers is looking really good. I mean, throwing up $10,000 and then for the Friday event it says up 2K basically. And there's a bunch of other 2K events that I can't imagine that they're getting more than 40, 50 players from. I was, I asked a few people to hear what the UK regional numbers were. Um, I saw a photo, which I think there was 30, 30 people in the photo that I counted but it was kind of cut off, so I'm not sure if there was more tables, but it's extremely small player pool and would arguably make it fairly well for if you have a kind of a magic background. If you just have a general TCG background and can pick up games very well, you might be able to make a decent amount of money off of Lightseeker. So maybe that's for you. And then the last thing that just blew me away for the good things was the focus on digital. And primarily because they, they let this, you know, physical to digital experience that they were hinting at. And for those that don't know, previously Light Seekers uh, companion with an, an app that was like a kind of an RPG beat em up, if you will. So you could take your card, scan it, and it would give you that item, that creature, whatever it was in the game. So there was this secondary market to that as well, if it's claimed or an unclaimed card. And if, it was really nice because you could like, buy the these heroes play sets you could like give a uh it's basically an action figure you could give to you know a niece nephew whatever and you could have the cards for yourself so everyone wins at the end of the day but i'm really excited to see what they're going to do for the digital field because of all the other things that are coming out we have mtg arena that's going to be really big we have artifact that's going to be a, a complete blowout for a lot of the digital games we're getting very polluted in how many people are having digital games and we need to consider what are the options and how these games can survive on that digital medium mediums but that's yet to be seen so what's the bad and when i say bad i mean this is beyond bad i fell out of my chair when i saw this i have never seen a smaller trading card game facebook group ever period i've seen living card games that have bigger groups so if you guys are interested in this game the first thing i want to say is go to light seekers tcg on facebook get connected with players and let them know you're here it's very difficult to see this game growing for those gen con events unless they really start pushing it and we really start building the game as a community because at the end of the day for a lot of us that have played other trading card games or those that have played other niche uh, japanese trading card games it's really difficult to build that initial base but once it gets rolling and gets some extra events it really does help trickle players in but with only, I mean, 259 members at the time of recording this, that's not good for a game that's been out since Gen Con. So hopefully they can improve those numbers. So at the end of the day, is it worth it? For me personally, if I wasn't playing all the other games that I was playing, I might consider it. There is a good amount of money to be won, and arguably the game isn't that hard to pick up, and I feel that I'd be fairly confident in playing it. So if you are purely an EV hunter and really want those cash prizing, I would strongly suggest looking into it. However, if you're someone who's already playing Magic or Hearthstone, playing multiple other games, it's nice that they have this kind of multiplayer EDH format built into the game rules, but ultimately it's going to get a pass from me. It's so hard to find people who are in this game or even know of it. At the time I posted on Facebook, I had three or four people message me saying, hey, I've never heard of this game and I wanna know more about it. What do you, information do you have? And that's the whole reason why I made this video. But they had a booth at Gen Con. So if you went to Gen Con and it was in a premier area, 
you should have seen their setup. And admittedly, it was pretty good. So I don't know what the disconnect might have been. Maybe just they weren't getting enough foot traffic in that one area, but the booth was always packed. So I'm really surprised to see that there were so few people, you know, in that Facebook group to start with. So again, it's going to be a pass for me, but if you are a strictly EV hunter, I could see where this game is going to be a win for you. So again, check the comments below, guys. I'm going to have a ton of helpful links if you want to learn more, how to play, join the Facebook group, all that good stuff. Let other people know about the game if you're excited about it because we need more people to play at the end of the day. So that's all I have for this video. If you like this video, make sure to drop us a like. That helps us out a ton. And make sure to subscribe for future Six Sages gaming video. So on behalf of the rest of the team, thank you so much for watching, guys. And we'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one. This video made possible thanks to our Patreon supporters. Thank you to our honorary sages.